So we started a series last week about cherry picking the Bible. Um, this is a copy of the Holy Scriptures. And again, just a brief reminder, there are 46 books in the Old Testament, um, and there's 27 in the New. And I got the idea, uh, I, I hope from the Lord God of hosts, to uh, cherry-pick the Bible. And uh, just all those, I don't know, significant scripture passages that fundamentally changes everything about us when we know about them. And so we've been doing um, a cherry picking on, and the section is Genesis chapter 1 through chapter 4, verse 16. Now, it's only, uh, it's only four pages. And listen to this segment. <laughs> the whole Bible the next 4,000 years is actually present in these first three and a half pages of the Bible. The whole thing, the whole thing. In times past, God spoke to our fathers in various and shadowy ways through the prophets. But in this, the final age, he has spoken to us through his son. So even in the shadowy ways of the Old Testament, he reveals to us what's coming in the future at the time of Christ. So two weeks ago, we did Genesis chapter 1. And it, it teaches us from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, about the trinity of all things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God the Father. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, moved over the darkness, and then God said the Word. So, the Trinity, the Father, the Spirit, and the Word. And this first chapter of, of Genesis reveals that, deliberately, that uh, the universe and all that is in it was created by God, and it's deliberately fitted into a um, seven days. And I'm of the opinion that the first chapter of, of uh, the first page of the Bible was a hymn that was sung in the temple, and there's a refrain running running through it. That God saw that it was good. This evening came and morning came the first day. God saw that it was good what he had done. And evening came and morning followed the second day. So now chapter 2 of Genesis um, mentions the creation of man and woman and the Garden of Eden. And we see that uh, God... Man was created by himself in this first particular account uh, in Genesis chapter 1. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Man and woman together are in the divine image. Not man by himself, not woman by herself. They're in the image of the... Now, and then there's something strange happens. There's a second account of creation. So why have a second account of creation if you had it already? So somebody else wrote this as far as I can see. And so we're told here that... Just a brief dipping into it again. Um, and in the second account of creation woman is not even created, even though she was created in the first chapter. So listen to this, please. And the Lord God gave the man this warning, this admonition. You may eat indeed of all the trees in the garden. You have free will. That God is free. You have free will. Nevertheless, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
You are not to eat it, for on the day you eat of it, you shall most surely die. And I'm at pains to point out to you, it wasn't an apple tree. And all this fuss over an apple. And, you know, um, it was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And let me ask you now, do you know what's right and wrong? Of course you do. So whatever it was, we have it. The knowledge of good and evil. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, and just this last part, and then we'll do the third cherry. In, in, um, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. So from the soil, God fashioned man. God fashioned all the wild beasts and all the birds of heaven. Then he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Each one was to bear the name the man would give it. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the wild, the birds of heaven, all the wild beasts. But no helpmate suitable for man was found for him. No helpmate. Now watch what God does next. The Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep. Now remember later on, the man Jesus would fall into a deep sleep on the cross. And while he slept, he took out one of his ribs and enclosed it with flesh. Remember later on, the soldier would open up Jesus' side as well, and out would come blood and water. The Lord God built the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. The man exclaimed, this at last is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman, for this was taken from man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife and they become one body. Marriage was God's idea, man and woman in the divine image. So, something went wrong and you say well what went wrong the serpent this is genesis chapter three and it says the serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that the lord god of hosts had made it asked the woman we're dealing with a talking snake here it asked the woman did god really say you are not to eat from any of the trees in the garden. The woman answered the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it nor touch it under pain of death. Then the serpent said to the woman, no, you will not die. Are you beginning to wonder who the serpent is? God knows, in fact, that on the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. And what's ironic about this particular temptation, the serpent telling them that your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. They were already like God. He tempted them with what they already were. Isn't that strange? Remember earlier, the Lord God said, I will create man and woman in my own image and likeness. And now he's telling them, you will be like gods. The woman saw that the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eye and that it was desirable for the knowledge that it could give. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She gave some also to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Now they're together. Bear this in mind here. No blaming here. They're this together. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed themselves. So they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin clothes. Now, if you wonder about all of this, you know, uh, do you notice that we don't walk around naked? The human body is lovely in and of itself. It was created by God. 
and yet we'd be ashamed if we were stripped naked in public. Um, so they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. Now this all um, raises the question, where did the talking snake come from? And is it really a snake? So I can tell you now with a little bit of help from the Lord, you'll find this in the book of Revelations, the, the essence of it. Um, the angels in heaven, the nine choirs of angels, the seven archangels are continually awed by the beauty of God. They continually cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. He was, he is, he is to come. A Catholic mass all over the world, uh, we join with the angels and saints saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. He was, he is, he is to come. So all I can do is, is express it as best we can here. Um, the day came where the eternal God showed the angels, the nine choirs of angels, the seven archangels, a vision of himself as a human baby. Whatever, you know, however, tiny baby. And the eternal God, the word took flesh, the Trinity as a baby. And the angels are astounded, astounded by it, except one angel in particular, Lucifer. And the name Lucifer means the bearer of the light. Uh, just using a physical image, like the Statue of Liberty is, you know, bring me your huddled masses, this country of light. Well, Lucifer was the bearer of the light in heaven, the brightest creature next to God. And for reasons I do not understand, he went into rebellion against what God was planning to do become a human baby and he cried out in heaven I am like God I am like the Holy One not these humans and so war broke out in heaven and the war was about us um, he was cast down from from heaven uh, cast out of heaven and and we now where, where did he come from like he who was the brightest creature next to God is now cast down to the earth he was always here, the, the archangel Lucifer, as an angel, but now he has become a malignant presence. It's almost like um, the human body sometimes is good in, in and of itself, uh, but some of our cells would go rogue sometimes and we develop cancers. So here is Lucifer.